uh, we go through the questions of the last section do not let anyone destroy God's plan for us so why do many people have the tendency of being critical with people and hurting people easily so why do people like to criticize other people and hurt other people the reason is because all people have a sinful nature and people have also a legalistic point of view they always compare other people with themselves they say I don't have this problem but they have that problem and sometimes they miss uh, they don't see their own problem they just see other people's problem so uh, and also people they concentrate in what they get so when people don't give them what they want and then they're unhappy there are all kinds of reasons basically people are you know sinful they are critical they don't uh, they want people to be nice to them and uh, they are not they don't have love to consider other people so all different reasons why people have a tendency to hurt people and more people some people are more out of control than others and then too when Joseph was sold by his brothers humanly speaking has have his brother taken many things away from him yes because Joseph was loved by his father Jacob and now he lost the love of the father and uh, uh, the care of the home and he became a slave in Egypt that's humanly speaking it's a lot of change a lot of uh, he lo lost a lot according to Genesis 39 2 the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered how was Joseph relationship with God when he was sold to Egypt was he affected by his brothers selling him to Egypt so the Lord was with him and the Bible tells us that the Lord always wants to be with people, but some people don't want to spend time with God. They don't pray to God. They don't obey God. Then God would not have a close relationship with Him. There is no one person in the Bible who, who doesn't like God, who doesn't, have, who doesn't pray, who doesn't obey God, and then God still stay uh, with Him and, and uh, bless Him with His presence. There is no such person because when people don't have a close relationship with God, then God cannot have a close relationship with Him too. So the fact that Joseph has a, a close relationship with God, that God was with him, that means he has maintained a relationship with God. And uh, so his relationship with, with God was good. And was he affected by his brother selling him to Egypt? I have to say this even though the Bible, Bible didn't say that he must be affected in some way but he handled that in a short time so he must be affected by in some way because he is a human being he will be very unhappy he will be in fear when he was sold on the way he will be unhappy and he, he should have some anger too angry with his brothers but then when he calms down when he think about you know when he pray to God now he probably has a habit of praying to God constantly so if we pray to God a lot and then God will speak to us and guide us God will guide us and God stays with Joseph so that comforted Joseph and Joseph has confidence in God and he continued to pray to God and then he was not affected by his brothers so that's why he could forgive the brothers when he saw them again. <coughs> so what do Genesis 39.2 and Genesis 50.20 say that God did to Joseph when he was sold by his brothers? 39.2 says that the Lord was with him. So the Lord stayed with him and prospered and he prospered so God caused him to prosper and then Genesis 5, uh, 50 20 says that that God intended it for good for the saving of many lives so God uh, bless him and bless many other people and God has the intention of uh, using this experience to bless him now did God cause his brothers to sell him no because sins do not come from God sins came from people and came from Satan so his brothers have jealousy of him and Satan caused the jealousy to go stronger and stronger and Satan want to attack Joseph with that anger but God has a higher plan than Satan 
God plans something else better. And God knew ahead of time already what Satan's going to do, what uh, Joseph's brother uh, are going to do. And God already has a plan. So uh, applying Joseph's experience, can people take away God's plan in our lives if we love and obey God? No, they cannot. So I hope we have this confidence. Nobody can take away God's plan. Even when we suffer, we, even when people uh, mistreat us and cause us to suffer, we will say, it doesn't matter what they do. When I trust in God and when I have a close relationship with God, I'll be blessed by God. God will bless me. Do what people say negatively have authority? So when they say negative things, they attack us and say, you're useless, I don't like you, I don't want you, I don't want to see you. Do these words have authority? No, because God has the absolute authority. Even if a king tells us, he doesn't like me, I want to kill you. It doesn't matter because God has the upper hand. God has everything in his hand. If God doesn't want us to die, the king cannot kill us. So Jesus said to Pontius Pilate, if it's not for you, you know, the one above you to give you authority, if not for the authority from above, you have no right to treat me. You have no control of me. So Jesus knew that it's God the Father who has everything in his hand. So we don't have to, people cannot take away the blessings of God. Do what people say negatively have authority? Why are so many people affected by negative words? How can we stop being affected by people? Because most people look at people. Most people are affected by people. From our childhood, we depend on the people around us. So that's the human way. We depend on our parents, depend on our family, depends on our teacher. Now it's not wrong, but we need to depend on God totally. And we have to depend on our parents for provision. It's, it's a fact. But we don't depend our whole life, our whole lives on them. That we don't, you know, if the parents say, don't believe in Jesus, we don't entrust our lives to them. We continue to trust in Jesus. So we don't let them control our lives. But many people let, you know, rely on the parents. So as they grow up, they are affected by other people who yell at them, who say negative words to them. And then they, um, they're affected by them. So how can we stop being affected by people? The point is that we trust in God for, for blessing and provision. And we know that God, uh, people cannot take away God's blessing. So we don't, uh, don't rely on the words of people. And we learn not to be affected by people. And we use the five step of victory. And we'll talk about that later. How to not to be affected by people. We say, I can choose not to be affected by people. Seven, why is it important to clear the garbage from negative words and actions of others and ourselves? What can this garbage do to us if we don't clear them? It's important because the garbage can cause us to be sad and, ha and, and unhappy and take away our faith. When people are unhappy all the time, he will complain to God and then he will have no faith because God is the one who can bless us. If we have a, uh, don't have a good relationship with God, then it will affect our whole life. So the garbage will stop our relationship with God. So we must clear the garbage. Any negative thoughts? Negative thoughts will be like saying, oh, I'm useless, nobody likes me, even God doesn't like me. Those are negative thoughts. We don't want those negative thoughts stay in our mind. Number eight, how can we clear this garbage? We clear this garbage by saying, by trusting in God. God can bless me, God can help me, God will give me strength. Nobody can take away those things. So we turn off the negative influence of people. We don't take the negative influence of people seriously. And we take only the good things from God. Please describe the five steps of victory and describe how you would use it after someone yelled at you angrily. Aware, the five steps are aware, destructive, Bible, pray, choose. Uh, actually, you should use the word obey. So the five step of victory would first be aware that I'm affected by the person. Aware that someone has yelled at me and then I feel unhappy. And it's destructive if I continue to be unhappy. Bible, what does the Bible tell us to do? And pray for forgiveness and for strength and choose to obey. I choose not to be affected by him. 
Now, you see, even sometimes when people are yelling at us, we can apply this five step to victory. We can, while, while he's yelling, we'll say, He cannot harm me. God can bless me. I can have peace. I can talk peacefully to him. Now, there was one testimony in Chinese about a, uh, a woman who grew up in a family and the father always gamble and drink a lot. And the father treat them very badly. And then the wife died. And then the, the, the three girls in the home, he always treated them badly. But then uh, the girls became Christian. And one girl that uh, the father kept yelling at her. And then after she became a Christian, she learned not to take it seriously. And while the father is yelling at her and using foul language, she would, in her heart, pray to God, thank God, thank God, thank God for giving me strength. Thank God for treating me nicely. And then she even, later, she even stepped to her father and massaged her father and say, oh, don't be so angry. When you're angry, it hurts your body. Oh, it doesn't matter. And try to calm down the father and the father <laughs> didn't know how to respond. And later, the relationship got better and better. And when the father got sick and went to the hospital, the daughter witnessed to him and brought him to Jesus. And the daughter even kissed the father on the forehead and also took the courage to hold on to his arm when they were walking on the street to show the affection to the father. So this woman has a strong, a, a total victory over the foul language of her father. So she, she had this victory. So it's a good example of how someone can say, it doesn't matter what he says, I can overcome it. I don't have to take it seriously. I can bless the person. I can smile at the person. I can give him some water and say, okay, thank you for what you say. And uh, uh, thank you, I'll, I'll take care of it. I'll watch it. I'll be careful. So calm the person down and do something nice to him to calm him down. And then number 10, if we improve by 1% a day, what will happen after many days? How can we encourage ourselves with this concept? If we improve by 1% a day, 100 days will be 100%. So we can encourage ourselves. I improve a little bit. I did pray today. I did try to put down the burdens. I did rejoice in the Lord. I count the blessings of God. I forget about the garbage. I put, put down the garbage. Then they're improving. Then we can say, I'm improving. Thank God, thank God, thank God for changing my life. And thank God that I'm obeying God. Thank God. that, And it's not being proud. It's saying, thank God, God has moved my heart so that I obey Him. I thank God that, that God has changed me, that I'm willing to change. Thank God I'm changing. That way, we can be happy and we can actually rejoice. I'm improving now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then the more we spend time praying and loving God and, enjoy, and enjoying God, we can have more joy. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I love you. I like you. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> that way we'll have more and more joy. Okay? So we, uh, we're going to stop here. I'll, I'll use another example to conclude and then I'll conclude with a prayer. For instance, some family, uh, the spirit, uh, the husband and wife don't have a good relationship. And very often it's the wife who comes for help to the f pastor. And usually, you know, the wife complains that the husband doesn't listen to her, doesn't talk to her, doesn't help her, and, uh, and the wife is frustrated. And then the husband usually say, the wife next me, the wife is emotional. Uh, and so both complaints because of sin. So if one person, if the wife is affected by the husband, what can the wife do? The wife can say, okay, it's our fault. We did something wrong. Uh, please, Lord, forgive me, help me to overcome this. And then be aware of the, of the negative thinking and the, that, that uh, she's affected by the father. And then she will say, I'm aware that I'm affected by, by the husband. 
and then it's destructive and then what does the Bible say the Bible say forgive and forget and bless and not to be affected by people do not fret because of the uh, the evil action of other people and then pray for forgiveness and for strength and then five choose to forget to put down the garbage choose to forgive choose to bless choose to uh, say good things to the husband and then the relationship will improve so that's something we can do even when the other person is mistreating us so I hope we all can learn this now after I learned this after God taught me this five steps to victory I have applied many many times so that I'm not, I'm not affected by people so that I continue to have this joy so that I can grow in the Lord and maintain this good relationship with the Lord and I found that it has helped me greatly so I hope that you all try this try this today and uh, apply it now we have one hour break for lunch and then afterwards we'll come back in one hour's time we'll, we'll have a prayer Oh dear Heavenly Father, please help us to not to be affected by people. That when people yell at us, when people take advantage of us, or even steal from us, or even break up the marriage, uh, maybe the spouse break up the marriage, that they do different things to hurt us, that we want to learn to have strength from the Lord. We want to look at God's blessing. We say, God can still bless me even when people hurt me. I don't have to take the, uh, the negative words and actions seriously. I can trust in God. I can put down the garbage and I can choose to be nice to the other person. I can choose to be peaceful because of God. I can rejoice in the Lord. The Lord is blessing me. I can be joyful and peaceful thank God for your blessings thank you Lord hallelujah God is good to me God is nice to me hallelujah God is good so I can rejoice in the Lord and forget about all these problems oh Lord please help each one of us to be able to overcome all these negative negative influences from people that we can treat our spouse n nicely that we can treat people who mistreat us nicely that we want to be nice to them Lord help us help us be with us thank you Lord Jesus because you're always nice help us to have strength to have the confidence that not that we're not affected by people thank you Lord Jesus thank you Lord Jesus please take away the garbage in our heart take away the feeling of feeling unfair that we say uh, things it's not uh, it's not fair that person treat me like that but we say it doesn't matter what he does because God will treat me back much more he will give me back much more when I trust in God and follow God thank you Jesus in Jesus name we pray amen hallelujah God bless you all uh, so think about that uh, we will uh, you know because of the problem in Ghana and Togo that will stop uh, after today so we think about that if it's possible then then we can wait for them to restart and but uh, we'll re alternate with Kenya on Wednesday okay God bless you goodbye come back in